Uh, hey, Coach. Um, we've seen uh, a little bit of both Duke Riley and TJ Edwards uh, working alongside Nate Gary as the, the nickel linebackers. I'm curious if you're looking for uh, like a permanent answer there or if it's sort of situation dependent and you, you, you like both of those guys. Well, uh, as you know, uh, we always work a lot of different combinations in camp. Um, number one, you try to find uh, the best mix. Number two, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure that guys are multi-positional in our scheme. Uh, we just don't have guys that are just one position. Uh, with the roster, the way it's built nowadays, you have to have guys that can play multiple positions. So I could uh, say that it's as much at trying to find uh, chemistry uh, as well as trying to make sure that guys are proficient at more than just one position to help us in the event that there's an injury during the course of the season or during the course of a game. Okay, Tim McManus and then Dave Zangaro. Hey, Ken, uh, what responsibilities will Nate Gary have on the defense this year, and uh, what have you seen out of him that gives you confidence that he's up for it? Well, Nate, if you uh, had the privilege of being in our meeting room, you would find out that Nate is really one of the smartest football players in terms of uh, being able to think ahead of the problems, uh, being able to manage all the things that we asked the Mike linebacker to manage. Uh, he's got really a good football mind, and so that's been always impressive to me. Um, we do put a lot on our Mike linebackers uh, in terms of being able to manage the games, to be able to get us in and out of calls, depending on what the offensive formation and what they're, what they're trying to do. So, Again, to have a guy that's got high-speed internet like Nate does, uh, making the calls and having that ability to manage manage the defense through the course of the game is very important for us. And he's taken it to a whole different level. I, you know, I look at the guys that we've had here in the past, and we've had some good ones. You know, the Jordan Hickses and Nigel Bradham did a nice job for us. Nate's right up there with all these guys in terms of giving us that type of mental approach and in his ability to manage manage our front and manage any audibles or any checks that we have for the defense. Go ahead, Dave, and then Ruben. Hey, Ken. Uh, the one word we always hear with Davion Taylor is raw. Now that you've had him in practice for a little while, is that a fair assessment? And do you think that he can catch up to the point where he actually plays a role on defense this year? Well, raw sometimes has a maybe has a different connotation to it, Dave. Uh, I, I put it more into time on the grass, uh, you know, just, again, competitive, getting him enough competitive reps that he can get comfortable in our scheme. I mean, he's a he's been a very diligent guy in our meeting room. He really wants to learn, um, but he hasn't he doesn't have the background in our scheme, number one, as none of the rookies do. And he's growing, uh, but I like him. I mean, he's a he's a great kid. He's got really a uh, rare athletic ability, uh, which will make him special as he grows within our defense. He just needs the competitive reps. And I think probably as Doug or Howie has probably told you guys, as we all know, you know, the tough thing in our league this year without preseason games is getting the young players, those competitive reps that help them grow within the scheme and grow within your organization. So that's always a, a challenge for us as coaches is how do we try to recreate those uh, situations for him because, again, we don't have those preseason games. But I like him. I'm glad he's he's with us as the Eagles. And, and again, he continues to grow within the scheme, and, and uh, we'll just keep plugging wood. I think he's got a, got a nice future ahead of him. Rube and then Les. Hey, good morning. Thanks for uh, your time. Uh, this is an unusually young group of, of backers. Uh, not, not, you don't have that veteran, uh, you know, 31-year-old guy. Um, is that a concern to you, the lack of experience, the lack of a veteran? And if not, why not? Well, Ruben, I, I would normally say that sometimes it is, but I would say this. What we have offset with maybe the veteran players is the youth and enthusiasm and the athleticism that you bring in when you've got a young crew of linebackers. I think we've got a nice mix. I really like my room. Um, there's enough of the Nate Garys and, and Duke Riley's and, you know, TJ Edwards now that he's in the second year in our scheme that I think we're going to have great leadership in the room. And now we've supplemented that with some uh, draft choices 
uh, I think, that are going to help us. Uh, so, again, people can say, hey, listen, you maybe you lack that veteran presence right now. But, again, I offset it by saying, listen, we've got great enthusiasm, great athleticism now in our room, and uh, these guys will have a role for us on defense. They're going to help us, and uh, I think you'll find out it's just going to balance out maybe that question that you asked about missing that veteran presence. Les and then Martin. Hey, Ken. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect between the way you guys see Nate Gary and the way the fans see him. For one thing, pro football focus, I think, had him at the very top of broken tackles uh, last year. Uh, what do you think of that? Why does he not come across as, as important a player as you guys see him as being? Well, a, quite frankly, I can't, I can't speak to how the fans uh, view our players. I just know I base it on uh, what he means to our defense. Uh, I'm in the meeting room with this guy every day, and he always continually impresses me about what he does. Uh, you know, I'll just give you a, a small example. Yesterday, you know, we had a, a third and long drill, and we, Jim decided that we're going to play a lot of man coverage because I think he wants to find out the guys, not only at linebacker, but in the back end that can cover one-on-one. -on -one. So we've got a little bit better idea as we go into the season. And, and Nate's technique changed based on down and distance. You know, one time it's a third and three and he's man to man on a back and he plays tight, sticky coverage. Another time it's third and 11 and now he plays that same route and he plays it with a little bit of depth. So he gives body help to a corner that's one on one. I mean, those are things that maybe the fans um, don't appreciate. But I do as a coach that's been doing this for 42 years. I mean, to me, that's a smart football player. So I have Nate in high regard right now. And, uh, um, again, maybe that's something that if the fans had an opportunity to be in our meeting and listen to discussions, they'd come away and they say, you know what, that's a pretty sharp guy. Go ahead, Martin, and then Zach. Hey, Ken. Um, I was wondering with, with uh, Jatavis Brown retiring, you know, recently, does that – Increase the importance of, of getting your rookies, you know, like Avion and, and Sean Bradley ready to play um, quicker. You know, like, do you, do you lose that luxury of, you know, having them be able to develop for a year and stuff? I mean, do you need to get them ready pretty much at a quicker pace now with Tavis retiring? Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of look at it, uh, you know, we've always had the mentality around here that if we lose a guy, whether it was in a game, for a short period of time or whether it was a seasonal injury that is kind of next man up. And when Jatavis decided that he was going to retire and walk away from football, um, to me, that's kind of what stuck in my mind. It's okay, guys, this is, wouldn't have been any different than if Jatavis opened the season for us and ran down on the first kickoff and, and something happened to him and now all of a sudden he, we've lost him for the season. It's always got to be a next man up mentality. And I think we coach – uh, with the intent in mind that these guys all have to be ready to play. And then we just let the season play out and guys find roles for us and they fit in where they need to fit in. But again, from my standpoint, I'm trying to prepare all these guys like they're all going to play and play a significant role. And then we'll just let the, the season play out and, and uh, those things will be decided uh, as we know as the season progresses. Zach and then Mike. Hey, Ken, on the other end of the spectrum of, of, the, of Davion, Sean Bradley had a lot of experience in college. Is that something you see already that he experienced, and, and, and does that make him more likely to be able to play defense early on? Well, Sean, you know, I really like Sean, too. You know, and again, I, we've talked about Davion Taylor. That's not to – certainly not to sidestep Sean. I'm glad Sean's with us. He, he has, and – I'll tell you the thing that impressed me about Sean early, and this really wasn't necessarily the, the football aspect was, but his leadership ability. I mean, we, we had some things with the rookies when they first came in before the vets ended up showing up, and how he took charge of getting the rookies uh, organized in, in practices showed me a real uh, leadership quality for him that I was happy to see because, you know, as, as playing a Mike linebacker, we can say he's kind of the quarterback of the defense, but again, for his ability to rally the troops around him early, that was impressive for me. 
And obviously, you know, you can see things out on the field that he's done that tells you this guy's played and he's played at a high level. So, again, he's, he's had time on the grass. Uh, we would expect him to have some more football acumen just because he has been that kind of guy. So where he fits in for us, you know, when you try to rate him between him or Davion, I don't really see it in, in terms of one's ahead of the other. I see them both as really good choices for us, very athletic choices for us. And my job is to make sure that these guys continue to grow in the scheme and progress and that they uh, eventually now become a, a cog of our defense. If time for a couple more, Mike, did you still have a question? Yeah, uh, Zach kind of took it, but I, I I can phrase something else. Uh, you brought up, talking about Sean. Uh, he's obviously laid some some hits out there. Uh, what do you say to a, a young rookie like that when he's laying hits on veterans and, and kind of bringing up the intensity of practice? Well, I, I number one, I love the guy's intensity and I love his competitiveness. Um, as anything, you, you sometimes you have to put a governor on the, on an engine that's racing real fast. And, you know, part of the deal with the rookies is learning how we practice and learning how you have to take care of not only yourself, but you have to take care of your teammates. And I, I get it. These guys want to come in and they want to impress the coaches. Uh, but, again, there's that fine line between impressing and making sure they're smart about protecting their teammates. So that's a learning curve I think any rookie would have, not only Sean, but, you know, Dante Olson and, and Davion Taylor. Those are, those are lessons that all the guys that, are, that have been in my room that have had years under their belt have learned along the way as well. So we just talk through it. You know, let's be smart. You know, if you, if you come free on a blitz, you got to stay away from the quarterback, you know, and, and uh, we can't afford to get our guys hurt. Uh, we know when you could have had that opportunity to make an impact play uh, in practice, but if you're smart, you stay off of it so that, again, you don't put yourself in predicament and you don't end up hurting one of our other players. That's a learning curve, and I think, again, it just comes with time within our scheme and time with us, and he'll, he'll learn it. I mean, again, I love the guy's enthusiasm and I love his competitiveness. Uh, we just got to be smart about when, when we take those shots, so to speak. We got to wrap it up here, Bo. I know you've been waiting patiently, so go ahead. No problem. Um, on TJ, um, what – kind of jump have you seen from year one to year two out of him? And, and as Jim, uh, as you were talking about, trying to find out if these guys can cover man-to-man, -man, do you think TJ can do that? Well, the one thing that TJ has impressed me with, and, you know, we had a conversation in the offseason about the physical things I thought he needed to work on to continue to improve. I think he's done that. I think, uh, you know, my uh, – my viewpoint is, is that he's moving better now than when he came to us last fall, which is really a testament to him and to our strength staff, you know, how they've worked with him virtually through the offseason and the work he's put in. And TJ's got another year in our scheme. So, again, <clears throat> his mental acumen, I think, is on a new level. Now, he continues to learn really the intricacies and some of the details, but he is so much further along now in our scheme than where he was at this time last year, as you would expect. And, uh, and again, the thing I like about TJ is, is that, you know, when, when he gets in there, uh, he's all in and he's, he can be a physical player. His ability to step up on interior offensive linemen to control blocks, uh, he's, he's got some nastiness and punch to him uh, that we need on this defense. Because, again, the teams that try to run the football on you and try to establish that type of mentality – with their offense, I think he fits well into the fact that we've got T.J. Edwards on our team.